everyone, this is Darken, and I'm going to be reviewing the Wacom 27 QHD Touch. And I actually just have it connected to a MacBook Pro uh, from 2014. This is actually the only machine that I can hook it up to because I don't have a desktop. Um, so I'm going to be running it with the laptop. Alright, so here's the 27 QHD Touch. And I want to start off by saying that I have a screen protector on here. And it's not anti-glare, so there's a lot of glare on this. Um, I decided to go with scratch resistance over anti-glare because uh, this isn't a mobile workstation, so I didn't feel like I really needed anti-glare since I can just close the windows, and um, I shouldn't really have any problem with that. So this is the Photo Done uh, screen protector. Uh, I highly recommend them. I've tried a lot of different brands before, and the Photo Done screen protectors are by far the best that I've ever tried. Um, I'm always super paranoid about scratching screens like this, so I always buy screen protectors uh, just to make sure that I save my screen, uh, especially because I have kids. You know, I don't want them doing crazy stuff. So, like, if they come up and use a sharpie on here or something, at least I can take the screen protector off, and my screen will actually be safe. All right, so I guess I'll start off with the stand. So, unfortunately, this stand does not come with the Cintiq which kind of sucks. <laughs> it's a $400 stand, um, and you basically have to have it. Uh, the 27QHD comes with these little feet on the back, but you, it only gives you a 20 degree angle. So unless you want to work you know, hunched over your Wacom all the time, uh, I would definitely suggest getting the stand. So you can adjust the stand uh, at any angle this way, but if you want to move it forward, uh, there's only one locked position. So up here, like this, this is the only locked position, which is actually the one I use because um, it's a pretty good height for sitting. But if you want to move it lower, then you have to rely on the Cintiq resting on your desk in order for it to stop, because otherwise it's just going to fall. So you have to try and find a good spot, and then you can you know, angle the screen here like this. Uh, so if you want to put it like down on your lap, you can do that. I kind of wish that it could lock um, at different angles this way, but unfortunately it only has that one angle that it can lock at. So if you actually open up the back of the stand right here, there are different cables inside there, and there are also different adapters as well. So I'm actually using the mini display port to display port to hook it up to my MacBook Pro. Uh, I didn't want to use HDMI because you can lose resolution that way, uh, but you'll be able to use the full resolution if you use the display port. So don't forget that your cables are in here. I know some people don't really know about that. All right, so this is the Express Remote that comes with the, the tablet or the Cintiq, and it's magnetic, so you can actually just uh, move it anywhere on the side that you want. And um, you can put it on the other side as well if you're left-handed, which is nice. Um, I know that I do move this around quite a bit depending on my setup. Uh, sometimes I do sit on a yoga ball because uh, I have to wear my son. And so when I'm doing that, uh, I'm actually a lot lower. And so I actually need to move this down in order to be able to reach it. But when I'm sitting on my chair, uh, I usually have it kind of up here in the middle. So it's nice that you can actually move this around. And this is just for charging the remote. Now when I did my original review back in 2015, uh, I came across the problem that this remote would often get confused with other units that were nearby because I was in a studio, uh, which was a huge problem. You know, sometimes my remote would start controlling somebody else's uh, Cintiq and vice versa. Uh, so when I'm at home, I don't have that problem because this is the only machine. Um, that was two years ago. I don't know if they fixed that problem, but um, yeah, that was something that I ran into when I originally started using the 27 QHD. All right, so the remote, uh, the original one I got was defective. Uh, the touch ring didn't work at all. And um, I actually found out that if you pop open the back of this, like you wouldn't really know that you're supposed to open the back of this, but um, I found online you can actually pry this open. Uh, if you do that, there's a tiny little reset switch, and hitting that actually fixed the touch ring. But another problem was that this button right here, 
didn't really work. In order to make it work, you had to push it really hard, and uh, that kind of made that button useless because um, when you're painting, you know, if you have to push a button really hard, um, it, it makes your workflow uh, drop to pretty much zero because you're sitting there trying to push this really hard. And then it also didn't even work every time you pushed it. So um, I opened a ticket and they actually sent me a replacement and this one so far works fine, which is good. So now that the remote works, you know, I, I like it a lot. Um, I'm not really too much of a fan of touch rings in general. I really like the touch strip back on the Intuos 3, but they kind of got rid of those a long time ago. Uh, I think the original um, Cintiqs, the big ones, had touch strips. I think they were on the back or something. But um, yeah, I, I've never really gotten too used to the touch ring, so I don't use it too much. Uh, sometimes I'll use it for brush size. So I have it so that I can just move it around to make the brush bigger or smaller. All right, just to go over my setup really fast with the Express remote, remote or Express Key Remote. Um, so first of all, I have a touch ring. The middle one's set to brush size so that I can just make the brush bigger or smaller by going like this. Uh, the other ones are kind of, actually, they're all just default. This one rotates the canvas, and then the first one uh, zooms in and out. So I actually don't use those. Um, I use different buttons for that. So I only use it for the uh, the brush size. So let's reset that. I have these top ones set to undo and redo, which I think is also default. Um, this one I had as color picker because I was having trouble with color picker before with the stylus, and I still am. Uh, so sometimes I use that. Uh, this bottom one here is save, and then this one is save as. Uh, this one here is actually the radial menu. So this is actually how I get to most of my shortcuts. Uh, I don't use a keyboard when I'm working on these. Um, I kind of got used to not using keyboards when I was um, first starting with the, uh, the Fujitsu ST5112, which is a mobile tablet. Um, I really wanted them to be mobile, and lugging around a keyboard kind of defeats the purpose. So I just got used to using you know on-screen things and radial menus and all that, and then I carried that over to the Asus EP121 and then on to the Companion. And so with my radial menu, I can get to uh, you know, my brush. Actually, let's change color. See, so yeah, I have this one set to the color picker window. So the menu, I can go to eraser and go to my brush. I have one which is a, a mixer brush Then I have save and if I click save, it opens a new one where I can get save, save as, open, print screen, and new. If we go to edit, this is where I can do all my transforming, you know, transform, warp, distort, fill, copy, paste, copy, merge, and liquefy, all, all the things that I use fairly often. All right, so the bottom one I have, uh, it is set to flip canvas. So if we draw something and then I want to flip it, you know, you just flip it easily that way. Uh, this one is adjust. So this brings up levels, color balance, curves, image size, canvas size, and QSAT. Again, uh, more things that I use all the time. And then this one is set to deselect. So this pretty much has everything I need. I mean, sometimes I might need to go in here and you know, maybe if I want to flip just a layer instead of the entire canvas, you know, sometimes I'll have to go through the menus to get to that. Or um, you know, maybe if there's something else, like maybe if I want to do a blur or something like that, then I have to go through those menus. But I don't really need to use the keyboard. You know, the only time I ever really use the keyboard is if I need to actually type something. So most of my entire workflow is just done with the Express Key Remote. And um, you know, there are enough buttons on here that I can get that done. Uh, so the middle ones here, I have it set to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, this This one right here below it, is uh, the hand tool so I can move my image around. The one below that is shift. Uh, this one here merges stuff down, merges layers. Uh, this one, what does this one do? I forgot. Oh yeah, this one selects the, uh, the move tool. Uh, this bottom right hand one, this actually starts screen flow whenever I'm doing tutorials. Uh, this one here will switch my cursor to the other monitor. And then this one is just uh, the default, the Wacom screen keys. I don't even use this. Um, 
And then let's see, this top button is, uh, oh yeah, this is brush size. So this, I can also make my brush bigger and smaller this way, but I have run into problems using this shortcut. I don't know if it'll, it probably won't do it now that I'm, oh, there it goes. So I was trying to resize the brush, but it opened up the brush menu, which is right click. So sometimes that happens, which can get really annoying. Like when you're trying to just resize your brush and then it opens or it gets stuck. See now I'm not using the button. It was getting stuck resizing my brush. So it took me like a few strokes for it to get out of that. See again, it's, it's stuck doing it. Um, so I actually don't resize my brush using that shortcut anymore because there's so many bugs with it. Um, I'm assuming it's just, you know, some sort of a driver or Photoshop issue. So I actually just use the touch ring uh, so they don't have to worry about those bugs. Uh, the other bug that I was running into is with the, uh, the color picker. So I actually switched it so that I can kind of avoid that bug. So let me go back here and put it back. Let's go into the settings and yeah so i just have it set to eye right now which is the eyedropper typically i would have this set to um, alt or option you know depending on if you're on a mac or a pc so let's see if it'll do it this time so the problem with it is sometimes it won't think i'm actually clicking it and then sometimes it'll get stuck on the eyedropper. So if you're trying to paint fast and, and color pick fast, which I tend to do, like switching a lot, uh, it's annoying because now it's stuck on the eyedropper and now it just switched back to the brush. So again, it's now it's stuck to the eyedropper. If I pick my stylus up, it switches back to the brush for some reason. Uh, but then also it doesn't always activate, like it doesn't always switch to the eyedropper. Sometimes I have to hit it several times in order for it to work. So uh, that can be pretty annoying. And so that's why I actually switched it to eye for eyedropper. So usually that works. Uh, if you click and then release, it'll go back to the brush. But if you just click it, then it'll stay on the eyedropper. So then I had to go back to brush. So usually it works, but sometimes I do have to go back to brush, uh, which is pretty annoying. Um, I didn't have this problem on my companion, so um, I'm not sure what's going on with this one. And then the top trigger I had um, sets a right click and that opens up my brush menu. And this is another way that I can resize. Um, I actually used this way when I was working on the ST5112. So I actually am pretty used to resizing my brush this way. Only problem is you can't really tell how big it is, you know, until you like move it over here or something. But if you're trying to paint fast and do a, a painting, you don't want to keep doing that. So I just kind of guess as to how big it's going to be. So sometimes I'll do it that way. Obviously this is a little bit slower than say, you know, using this or something. Uh, this one, sometimes it's a little finicky. Like you, it might get too big, too fast or too small, or yeah, sometimes getting the correct size can be a little bit of a pain and I actually have the sensitivity in this set way down. Cause otherwise it would, it would go from like this to like this in like a second. So uh, that's always a, a little bit weird to use as well. Uh, but other than that, you know, I think the um, the setup is working pretty well. It's mainly just the uh, the eyedropper tool in Photoshop. For some reason, that's having a lot of trouble. All right, so I guess I'll go over the touch aspect. Uh, touch is definitely not something you have to get. Um, I'm used to it because of the companion, and so it's part of my workflow. And so I just decided to go with touch since I'm already kind of used to it. Uh, you know, once you get used to working a certain way, you kind of miss it if you don't have it anymore. Uh, so what I use touch for is a lot of times I'll use it for zooming in and out that, and then also rotating my canvas so I can just rotate my canvas this way without having to use a shortcut or go through here or something like that. Uh, the problem with this, and I'm assuming it's a Mac issue, uh, since it's not a problem in PC. So in PC, I could just double tap and it would reset the view of the rotate tool. This one, it, it doesn't do that. So I actually had to go back to the rotate tool here and double click on it in order to reset the view and then like, you know, go back to my brush or whatever. So that's kind of annoying that I can't just double tap it to go back. 
the one problem with touch, it doesn't always work. Um, it probably won't do it now that I'm doing a video review, but sometimes like I'll be painting and then I want to move it and it, it just won't realize that I'm trying to, to do stuff with my hand. Like it just won't work at all, which is pretty frustrating when you pay like an extra $500 for a feature and then it doesn't always work. Uh, another problem, the accuracy seems kind of off. Like a lot of times if I want to press something, I'll have to press it a couple times in order to actually uh, hit it. Uh, Cause it kind of seems like it's off a little bit. Uh, maybe if I do like, if I try to type something. So the on-screen keyboard for Macs is kind of horrible. It's really ugly looking. But let's see. Yeah, see, it actually didn't even recognize that I typed the last two letters. So that's the other thing. Um, sometimes it doesn't really recognize that you're touching it, like if you're typing on the keyboard or something, because uh, it's not sensitive enough, I guess. Um, I don't think it's because of the screen protector, because it was doing this before I put the screen protector on, because I didn't have the screen protector for a few days. Uh, so that's, that kind of sucks. Yeah, touch is definitely something that I wish was better. And I've seen it in a lot of reviews, so it seems like it's not just a problem with my machine. It seems to be a problem with just the the product. So not very accurate. You know, sometimes it, it doesn't click the area that I'm trying to click in, and then sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Now, I know some people were complaining that you couldn't draw and use touch at the same time. Uh, the reason that they have it like that is so that um, you don't draw with your hand. You know, there's palm rejection. And so when you're drawing, uh, you don't want to also be marking your painting with your hand at the same time. Uh, but I actually just tested it, and you can actually use touch uh, pretty close, or when your stylus is pretty close to the screen. Like, mine is almost touching, and I can still do stuff, which is actually surprising. Um, I don't think the companion was like this. I think you had to kind of pick your stylus up a little bit more so it was farther away in order for touch to activate. But this one, I'm still resting my hand on it and still being able to use it. So my stylus is really close to the screen. Um, of course, if my stylus is touching, then you can't use touch. But you just lift it up like a quarter of an inch maybe and you can actually use it. So that I actually didn't notice. I just noticed that now um, because I never do it. You know, I never try and use touch while I'm like trying to paint. That's just not really how I work. Um, I'm usually, you know, I put my arm down and then I, I do whatever it is I need to do and then I'll, I'll start drawing again. But I guess now that I know that you can actually work with it pretty close, then maybe I'll start doing that. Oh yeah, this was another thing that this is kind of annoying. It's not really a, a big a problem, but it's annoying to me. So you can see that when I'm moving this around, it has the um, flick panning. So I don't have flick panning enabled. So if I'm using a shortcut like this, you can see how it just stops. So this is how I like working. It's kind of weird that it's like this when you're using shortcuts, but if you use touch, it has flick panning on it. So that's kind of annoying. Like I hate flick panning. So yeah, whenever I actually try to use touch, um, it has flick panning on it. So that seems kind of weird. So in terms of parallax, there's not really much of an issue with it. I've never had an issue with any of the machines I've ever worked on. Uh, maybe it's just something that, that doesn't bother me. So I've never really noticed an issue with that. Uh, in terms of, you know, the cursor accuracy, it's it seems pretty accurate. Again, I don't really have any problems. It's like when I'm over here on the side, I usually don't misclick anything. So it seems pretty accurate. There's also no cursor wobble. Uh, I know on like some of my older machines like the ST5112 and the Asus EP121, like if you put your cursor down here, it would start going crazy. Like it would start bouncing up and down by itself or moving side to side. So um, this one doesn't have any of those problems. Now, another problem I ran into is that, you know, since this is the second screen, um, sometimes when I try and move over to the other screen on my laptop, the cursor will get stuck on the Cintiq, and so I can't get it to move to the other screen. And it doesn't do it all the time, uh, just sometimes it'll get stuck and I'll have to sit there and kind of fiddle with it until the cursor decides, oh yeah, there's another monitor that I can go to and um, it'll go over there. So again, you know, it's probably not an actual issue with the, the Cintiq, you know, maybe it's uh, 
a Mac issue or something. I'm not really sure, but I haven't really found a solution to that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a problem. Uh, not too big. I don't really switch too much between the different screens. Um, oops. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it happens. So I'll go ahead and show you some of these other options on here. So if you click the little uh, wrench icon up here, actually, it's already open. It's down here. Oh, no, it's not. All right. Sometimes this thing takes a couple times for it to work. I have to hit it a few times. All right, so I have my settings in here. Uh, this is where you can change, you know, all of your shortcuts, you know, your touch, your remote, your stylus, all that stuff. Just kind of uh, standard, you know, pen calibration. So the new thing that they have on here is they have display settings. You know, I know a lot of people had problems with color and contrast with the older models. Uh, this one, you can actually calibrate the color and... Um, it's fairly robust in the different options that you can do. So I'm just waiting for this to kick in. All right, so you know you can set brightness, contrast. There are different color temperatures you can do, color spaces, and you can actually do your, your own custom color. So if you open this one, uh, you can change the hue, the saturation, gain, offset, all that stuff. Uh, I actually changed this one. I changed it to 150. These were all 120 before. I kind of felt like the screen was a little too dark. You know, I was trying to color match it with some of the other screens and um, it kind of just felt like this was a little bit washed out and uh, a little bit dark. So I changed that. You can also change the gamma. Uh, and then there's also an advanced tab where you can do sharpness, um, you know, the energy, the smart energy where if your room is dark, it'll kind of dim the screen. I usually turn that off. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are actually quite a few options in here. And then the color and contrast is already good anyway, so uh, you might not even need to use this. The first time I used the Cintiq uh, two years ago, I didn't even mess with any of these settings. But now that I have one at home, you know, I was trying to match it a little bit more to my other screens and what my previous paintings looked like. And so I ended up switching a few of these options. But yeah, it's pretty good to have uh, the display settings that you can change on there. You can also back up your settings so you don't lose them. Uh, one problem I had before, and of course it's not doing it now, maybe there was an update, is that it would keep populating new remotes on here, even though I only have one remote. So sometimes there would be like six or seven of these remotes right here. Um, it didn't seem like it caused an issue, but it just kind of annoyed me because there are like seven remotes on here when there should only be like one. So um, yeah, that was just kind of a little bit annoying. It doesn't actually cause a problem but I just, I didn't want seven listed there. I wanted one, uh, but yeah, I think that's kind of it for you know, the settings that you can change. So I forgot to go over the ports. Um, I mean, you can look it up online, the stats. So there are two USB ports over on this side and then there are another two USB ports over here. Uh, one thing that I know people were kind of concerned with was uh, the screen heating up. Cause I think some of the early ones had that problem uh, I have never had the screen heat up at all. Like it doesn't even really get warm. And, you know, I work for hours and hours at a time. So, um, yeah, I've never had the issue of the screen heating up. I also don't have any dead pixels. Uh, there's no dust under the screen. So in terms of quality control, it seems to be really good. You know, other than uh, the Express Key Remote, which had some problems. But in terms of lag... Oops, let me go to a different color here. Yeah, there's not too much lag. Um, I am running a screen recording program at the same time, uh, but also, you know, I'm just using a laptop. So it's not exactly the best rig for this, but um, I don't really have any problems like when I'm painting. I don't really notice anything. Obviously, if, if I go to a bigger brush, yeah, this is also a dual brush. At least I think it is. Let's see. Yeah. There's like a maybe a tiny bit of lag. But um, I usually don't use huge brushes and then paint super fast like this. I think t people tend to do that more when they're doing demos because they're just kind of scribbling instead of actually painting. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess if you're going to use like really big brushes, like this is a 900 pixel brush, a dual brush, obviously that had quite a bit of lag. Um, but I don't know how many times people paint 
with brushes that are that big that fast. So uh, it's not really a problem for me. All right, so that about wraps it up for the review. So a little bit of a shorter review this time. Uh, I tend to focus on negative things just because that's kind of what I noticed first. And I have a habit of finding bugs. So uh, I usually kind of, you know, look at those things first. And then whenever I go to read other reviews on other um, products, I usually look at the bad things first because um, I always have bad luck with products. And so I want to read what's bad about it because I might receive a unit that has those problems. And if I'm kind of okay with those problems or if I um, think that it's a fairly low occurrence that you might get those problems, then I might go ahead and get the product. This product is awesome. You know, I've used it a few times uh, in the past and two years later, you know, I still think it's a great product. Uh, I've already finished several illustrations on this, so I've been using it for like a month now or so. So I've done quite a bit of testing on it. Uh, I would probably say like a 9 out of 10 stars. I would knock it down a little bit just because the touch doesn't work as well as it should, especially since you have to pay like an extra $500 for it. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a great machine. Um, out of the other products that I've used that aren't Wacom, this is by far the best. I mean, it's more expensive, but you get what you pay for. You know, if, if you're going to want a product that lasts and actually works all the time, then, you know, you have to pay more money for it, just kind of how it goes. And I mean, it's kind of like that with a lot of other things. You know, when I was playing hockey, uh, you buy the more expensive equipment because it's better and it's going to last you a lot longer. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep rebuying the crappy equipment, which ends up being more expensive because you have to keep rebuying it all the time. But it's kind of the same thing. You know, if you buy crappy Cintiq, um, it's probably going to break. It might not even work out of the box. So um, for me personally, I just go ahead and go with Wacom because um, out of all the products I've tried, uh, they've had the best product so far, and I virtually never have problems with them. I mean, my Intuos 3 and 4, which are super old, still work fine. Never had any problems with them. So, um, same with my Companion, I've never had any problems with it. I have heard a lot of people with uh, charging issues. Um, luckily, I never had that problem, so um, maybe I just got lucky. But uh, yeah, definitely an awesome product. They have financing now, which is actually what I did because I didn't want to pay $3,000 all at once because I couldn't afford it. But luckily, since they have financing, uh, you can actually get the Cintiq uh, without having to pay all the money at once. Uh, the plan I'm on is like a three-year plan. It's like 116 a month. Uh, obviously, you pay interest on that, but uh, it actually gives you the option to buy a Cintiq if you don't have $3,000 in cash. So... Um, I thought it was worth it paying the interest because it actually allows me to get this in tea. Otherwise, I would probably never be able to get one. Yeah, hopefully this review helped. Uh, if you ever have any questions about it, uh, just email me. I'll try to answer them. Uh, if there are technical support things, I'll try and answer them. Um, but I, I'm not tech support, so your best bet might just be to uh, email Wacom because I don't know all the fixes to all the different problems. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that, and I will talk to you guys later.